Like we talked about before, pH is maintained in a tight range between 7.35 and 7.45. This is done by respiratory and renal mechanisms through changes in bicarb and carbon dioxide. And so, it is important to know the normal ranges of these molecules in the human body. The normal PaCO2 range is between 36 to 44 millimeters of mercury, and the normal bicarb is between 21 to 27 milliequivalents per liter. However, when there is derangements in bicarb and carbon dioxide, we also begin to see abnormalities in our pH. So, when our pH is less than 7.35, we call this an acidemia, and when our pH is greater than 7.45, we call this an alkalemia. So for example, a person has a pH of 7.24. How would you define this person's pH? This person has an acidemia, or is acidemic. In our next example, a patient has a pH of 7.49. How would you define this person's pH? This person has an alkalemic pH. Now, there is a difference between an acidemia versus an acidosis, and an alkalemia and an alkalosis, but you will often hear people incorrectly use these terms interchangeably. Emia, as in acidemia, simply means a pH less than 7.35. In other words, emia means the measured pH value in the blood. So when we say acidemia or acidemic, we are talking about the measured pH in the blood being less than 7.35. On the other hand, when we talk about alkalemia, we are talking about the pH of this person's blood being greater than 7.45. When we talk about osis, as in acidosis, we are speaking about the process. And in this case, an acidosis is the process or mechanism that lowers the pH, and vice versa. In an alkalosis, it is the process that will raise the pH. Going back to the process that causes derangements in pH, such as the acidosis and the alkalosis, it is either a respiratory process or a metabolic process, and sometimes more than one of these can cause derangements in pH outside of the normal ranges. So, when we have an acidosis, remember, it is the process that decreases the pH. It could either be a respiratory acidosis, where there is an increase in PaCO2, or a metabolic acidosis, where there is a decrease in bicarbonate. This would make an alkalosis a process that raises the pH. A respiratory alkalosis, therefore, would be a process that decreases PaCO2 and a metabolic alkalosis would be a process that increases bicarbonate. So when we have a patient with a pH of 7.55, we know right away that they are alkalemic. The alkalemia in this patient can be caused by either a respiratory alkalosis, in which case there would be a decrease in PaCO2 causing an increase in pH, or it would be caused by a metabolic alkalosis, where there would be an increase in bicarb, causing an increase in pH. And in summary, here's what we covered in part 3 of acid-base disorders.